So you bought your own Leica glass. Good. Now you did your EF mount conversion, your step up ring and some focus gears. The only thing left to do is to de-click them. All right, there's a couple tools you need. The first one being some clippers, some other sort of tools to bend uh, steel, some very small screwdrivers. This is a Phillips head type 00, but you also want to get your hands on a very, very tiny flat head screwdriver. Some small flat steel that you can use to bend in order to uh, make the conversion with. Some tweezers or twinklers or thingies, I don't know how you call them. Some epoxy resin to uh, glue everything nice and tidy. And last but not least, some acid-free Vaseline and some uh, ear swipes or cotton swipes or <laughs> you know what I mean. The first thing you want to do is you want to take off the mount. I already did the conversion on this lens, so I'm going to take off the cement mount first. Already took out the screws to save some time. Then you want to erase the last remaining screw on your original Leica mount. Then you see this black inner ring, all right? That is secured with three very, very small screws. One over there, one over there, one over there. Use the smallest flat head you can find and then take off these screws and then slowly start to lift this black ring up. You can do it by lifting up the entire mount and then once it's sort of half crooked, you can just lift it up real gently and take it out. All right. Now you can take off the original Leica mount, all right? Once you take this off, there's one thing you'll notice that if you flip the original mount over, you see these little, um, these little grooves here, yeah? Those little grooves make the clicking sound of your aperture ring. Now, I already took out this little ball, but if you um, do this for the first time, you'll see that right over here, there's a super, super small, tiny sort of metal ball with a, with a spring underneath. Take it out, all right? Take that ball out, take the spring out as well. And now technically, your lens is declicked, all right? There's one problem. There is a spring inside this lens this one, and once you move the aperture ring over like that, so now it is fully open at f 2.8, um, you know, nothing is happening pretty much, but slowly but steady, the spring will want to push your lens back to um, the closest position, which is on this lens, because it's the 24, f 22, but on the Summicrons it is uh, f 16, I believe. So slowly but steady, it's drifting. So we need to do something about it. So we got to take out that spring. The only problem is if we take out that spring and we put the lens at F2, and let's say we want to go back to F8, we can do that, but because the spring is not in there anymore, this little thing that operates the aperture system is stuck. So it is not moving. So we, not, you know, we cannot use that aperture ring anymore without the spring. But because we want it declicked for you know aperture pools and all that stuff, we need to find a way to attach this little sort of thingy to the outer circle. So this circle, all right? So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can very precisely match a little piece of steel that goes around this corner and then goes around this um, this thing. I'm not sure how you call that, but you know that that thingy. Let's call it thingy. And then it will be stuck to the outer ring. And now if we move the uh, aperture system, everything will be attached, all right? Now, that is quite difficult because you need to be very precise. There's another way you can do it that is to use um, glue, epoxy, for example, to glue this part to this part, but I would not really recommend it. And then there's another way which is a bit easier and that is to use small steel, um, pieces that you can bend. Uh, let's turn the lens over like that. Let's see if it's still in the middle. That you can bend and put right over there until it fits. Oh, that didn't really fit properly. There's a bit of plastic in there. All right, there we go. Yeah, so you can glue this piece of steel to the outside ring using epoxy. 
then this still will be moving a bit. So you can use another piece, which I've got right here, that you can glue on the inside of this ring, just like that. Oop, stay. I'm just using one of these little devices like that. And once you do that, now that piece of metal, like this thingy, is stuck to the outside ring. And this is you know, pretty nice and, and neat. So that's what you want to do. So essentially, that is all you need to do to declick it. The problem is, however, <laughs> to find the right pieces of materials. So I bought these, um, yeah, clips, not sure what they're called, these things. Um, I think it's used for uh, fabric and stuff. And once you open them up, you have a perfect size that fits right in between this groove and the bottom uh, ring here. So if you bend it using your fingers and using um, tools like, like this, you can just slowly but steady bend it over until you've got the right angle that fits in this groove. So that's what you, uh, what you wanna do. So let's glue this thing together um, using epoxy. So this is a Dutch brand. I'm not sure if you can buy this in the US or anywhere else in the world, but it is essentially two components um, mixed together. It's yeah, strong as concrete basically. So um, I'm gonna put some on this little tray here. Just gonna squeeze it in there, take out a bit of the pressure and put this one on there again. Watch out for your fingers and watch out for your eyes because it is very gnarly stuff. Then start mixing it together. Do this for about like 30 seconds until you're sure it is completely mixed. And once you've done that, you have five minutes to use it. Otherwise it is, uh, it's tightened up already. So you need to hurry up, you know, because it's not difficult enough. Anyway, oh, it's not in the frame, too bad. <laughs> oh. Anyway, all right, cool. Now we have that sorted out. Let's take these little pieces out again, just like that, put them on the side. Sweet. Now start to uh, apply a little bit of glue to the outside edges. Make sure you're not dripping any of that glue anywhere else because that will be a shame. Make sure to be very precise on where you put this because it's gnarly stuff and you don't want this to, uh, to be sitting on any other part of the lens. All right, now use your uh, tweezers or whatever you call those things and then slowly put that thing in place, press it against the lens and you're good to go. Now put the other one in place like that. I'm gonna use a little one to hold it in place right here. Just like that. All right, now press it down slightly. Sweet. Okay, so now I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue on that edge right here. So these ones are connected. Good. All right, now you gotta wait a bit because it needs to dry. As I already mentioned, in five minutes, it's starting to harden but it takes a full hour in order to really harden out completely. So you want to wait for that because if you start doing stuff uh, too early, um, you might damage it or you might shift it a bit and that's something you do not want. So uh, yeah, let's wait it out. All right, well, what am I gonna do? Mm, not sure, anyway. All right, so right now it is hardened out a little bit. Um, I waited for 25 minutes, couldn't wait any longer. Uh, take your screwdriver, put your flat head on it again, and then slowly start to unscrew this screw that holds the spring in place. 
There you go. Now you can see that the spring is loosened up. That's good. Slowly lift it up by using your flathead screwdriver and your tweezers. Wiggle it around a bit. And now it's spring open, that's good. Cool, now you've got another problem and that is that this part is very tight. So what you wanna do is, the best is to take it out completely, but uh, I don't have that tool, so I'm just gonna cut it open. Now, if there's anybody watching that does this professionally, he's probably wanna kill me, but yeah. These are my lenses and I will probably never sell them again. So now that is done. This one is out of the way. So we can, um, we can put back this little screw just for good measure. Put that one on there as well. So try to, uh... okay. So next up is you want to use some cotton wipes and some acid free Vaseline. I've got, uh, Grown oil, not sure if you can buy that in the US as well. It's Dutch, probably. Sounds Dutch. Um, just want to put some on your uh, cotton wipe and then slowly but steadily put some on these metallic parts. And then you uh, want to reassemble your lens. So put back your original mount. Make sure to align the red dot here with the red dot on your lens like that, find the holes. As long as you didn't touch anything else of that lens, nothing can be shifted. So it should be perfectly in order, all right? That is important. So the next thing is you want to put back your uh, little black um, ring, find these little holes, these ones here and that one there, and then just lift it in place and then it should fall right where you want it to be at. Now one of mine broke a bit, so uh, that's not too bad. All right, now you want to put them back in place. Take these little tiny screws, squeeze them on your screwdriver and then put them back. Perfect. All right, next up we are going to put on our um, Phillips head type zero zero. Take the uh, screw that goes into your original mount. Just pick one screw hole. It doesn't really matter which one. This is basically already what you have done previously. Put them nice and tight, but make sure to not strip them. Now this is where it gets tricky because you want to um, find the place where you want your mount to be at. Uh, I want my lens to have the focus number, like the focus indicator right on top. So I'm going to put my Leica mount, uh, my EF mount right here with the red dot just to the right side or left side, depends on how you check it. And then just find the nearest holes, these ones, and that's my position. So put back your black screws. Alrighty, well, moment of truth. Of the lens. Oh, buttery, freaking smooth. As you can see, this little thingy right here. Not sure if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. This little thing right here is moving along very nicely. So that gives us sort of a go ahead that it's been done correctly. Sweet. I do hear a little bit of resistance, like a sound. So something is um, rubbing against some metal somewhere, but I feel like that is not too bad. You can open it up a little bit more and then put some uh, some Vaseline there or oil or fat or anything uh, to smooth it out. But I am totally happy with this result. So yeah, well, that's basically it. That's how you can declick your own Leicas.
Again, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, I would always suggest you take him away and you know bring him to someone professional. But if you are uh, curious, like me, then this is a lot of fun to do. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. Enjoy your Leicas. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to help. And otherwise, happy shooting. Make some awesome stuff with these amazing lenses.